Hello everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. Now evaluating arguments, claims and lab results is a science skill that needs to be taught and assessed in the NGSS, that's Next Generation Science Standards, as well as the BC Science Curriculum. How do you do it? Today, I share two types of questions I generate for labs and tests to assess the evaluate skill. Now, a quick reminder, the handouts for this episode can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP51. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, before I get into the questions, I want you to know that I tend to assess evaluation on tests and not so much on assignments because tests are the one task I know where students are working independently. Now with labs and take home assignments, as you may know, students can copy off each other or they can get help from others and thus these may not be representative of students' ability to evaluate. Now, evaluation also differs depending on context. Thus, I'm going to go over two of the most common ways I assess evaluation depending on the two different definitions of evaluation according to the curriculum. All right, so definition number one. Evaluation is evaluating claims using scientific knowledge and findings from investigations. So on a test, what I do is I give students an opinion or idea and I ask them whether they believe the opinion or idea is true or false based on what they've learned. So for example, on my quiz on KMT, that's Kinetic Molecular Theory, I give this question on juicing lemons. And yes, juicing lemons is related to KMT. It says here, lemons can be juiced by cutting a lemon in half and then pressing it against the dome of a citrus juicer. One day, Leo collected 15 mils of lemon juice using a citrus juicer. B Leo's friend, excuse me, Brian, suggested Leo heat up the lemons before juicing them. Brian said that heating up the lemon before juicing will result in more juice being collected. Do you agree with Brian's hypothesis? And of course here it tells you what I'm expecting for an answer. Now, consider other wild claims you've come across and put those on a quiz for students to consider. The issue is not so much whether they're right or wrong, but more of how they've come up with their conclusion, their evaluation. Definition number two. Evaluation is identifying possible sources of error and suggesting improvements to our investigation methods. For this, I give students a lab activity to perform, for which I already know the exact result they should get. And I need them to do the lab and compare it to that exact result. Even better, if the lab is something that is counterintuitive to what students believe. So for example, in our pendulum lab, I have students measure how long it takes for pendulums of increasing mass to complete 10 swings if they all start from the same height. So what happens is students construct a pendulum with one washer and they swing it 10 times and measure the time it takes to complete 10 swings. Then they create a pendulum with two washers and do the same thing. And students measure the time and they come up with conclusion. Now usually students believe that mass decreases the time it takes to complete 10 swings. That is, they believe that as it gets heavier, it swings faster. And they will actually try to manipulate their data to match their belief, either by redoing parts that don't agree or omitting data. Then I tell students the real answer, which is mass does not change the time. Thus, the time it takes for 10 swings to occur on a heavy pendulum is the same as the light pendulum. So for a post-lab assignment, students answer one question by themselves. Identify two possible sources of error in your lab data and explain the impact of those two errors. Now, you might not be making pendulums in your class, I get it, but consider other measurements you make, like those for density, which is pretty set, pretty standard for metals. Now you can do the exact same lab there and have students explain the errors. 
That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below and handouts once again are at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP51. Thanks for watching and let's talk science education again soon.